I was sitting in my living room one day, and I said, you know, I wonder if you could find those F1 engines from Apollo 11 sitting on the bottom of the Atlantic somewhere. And I went to Google, and I typed in Apollo 11 booster impact coordinates. Yep. And they popped up. They had radar <laughs> tracked it all the way to impact. Right. And so I thought, this is going to be the easiest thing I've ever done. I'm going to go <laughs> recover those engines. Of course, that was the only part of it that was, <laughs> it was easy. easy. It, was it like turned <laughs> out to be incredibly hard. We did side scanning sonar first, and we located. The problem is, we located too many objects. Really? So it's like NASA's graveyard yeah, out there. Yeah. Like you know, all this stuff oh, that yeah. flew out there. Most of it, there's like a big thirty Pretty mile long ellipse. There, yeah. Very similar corridor. And so we found some things that we thought were very likely, and then we had to go investigate them. So we put together a big mission with remotely operated vehicles, with like high def cameras. And it's in 14,000 feet of water, 7,000 psi, so everything you do in those environments is very difficult. But it was actually incredibly fun. I brought my mom and my dad and my brother and my brother-in-law. My mom, there was 60 people on the boat where we recovered the engines. And there were 59 men and one woman, my mom. <laughs> so anyway, it took it took a full month. We were out at sea for almost uh, for like 28 days. Pulled up those engines, and that now that Apollo 11 F1 engine that actually flew the yeah. men to the moon is literally in the Smithsonian. As that a is of that. the coolest.